public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network. A network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. One of the most important men in the public defender's office is the trained investigator. It is from him that the public defender receives the majority of the information used in the defense of his clients. One such man is Edward McGrath, investigator, public defender's office, Los Angeles, who worked night and day to get me the facts on case 37423. People versus Wade Layton Foster. Do you have an attorney? No, sir. Do you have the money to employ an attorney? No, Your Honor, I don't. Public defender appointed. That afternoon, I had my first interview with my client in the lawyer's room on the 10th floor of the Hall of Justice. His charge, armed robbery. His plea, not guilty. And so you see, Mr. Matthews, I wasn't even in California at the time they say the holdup took place. And that was on May 29th at about 11 a.m. I was in Las Vegas, have been since last Christmas. Did you have a job? Oh, yes, sir. I worked for Mr. Bascom. He owns the Desert Flower Land Development Company. I was a salesman, a good one. And why were you let out? Well, you can't sell much land when it's 120 in the shade. No, I guess not. So I sold my car and headed for L.A. What kind of a car? Oh, it didn't get much for it. It was a 46 Ford Coupe. Color? Blue. And when did you get to Los Angeles? Well, uh, this is Tuesday, isn't it? Yes. It was four weeks ago today, July the 3rd. Well, can you prove that? I mean, with the ticket stub from the bus or train, you know. Oh, no, I hitch rides. Must have had about ten of them. And you can't remember any of the people who picked you up? No, sir. Now, it says here that you were picked up on a vagrancy charge in the Pershing Square area on July 10th. Now, your property file shows that you only had a dollar and twelve cents at the time. Well, you know how it is, Mr. Matthews. A fellow who lives in Vegas for a while thinks he's pretty good with the dice. Some boys on the east side proved me wrong. I see. How did the police tie you in with the robbery? Well, I guess I was in Lincoln Heights jail about three days. They found out I was a two-time loser. Oh, but that was a long time ago, sir. So every day they pushed me in the show-up, figuring somebody pinned something on me. There's the one, there's that one, the second one from the right. Foster, step out. He's the one who stole the money. He's the one who did it. I never forget a face. And she said, there's the one who did it. But, Mr. Matthews, I didn't even know what I was being accused of until the preliminary hearing. At which time you pleaded not guilty? Yes, sir. Now, uh, do you know anyone in Las Vegas whom we could contact who could testify that you were there on May 29th? Well, sure. The guy I worked for, the, the lady who runs the motel I lived at, and my girlfriend. She'd remember. Fine. Could I have their names and addresses? You believe me, Mr. Matthews. You believe I'm innocent. If I didn't, Wade, I'd advise you to change your plea to guilty. Oh, and will you make a reservation on the 9.30 flight tonight for Las Vegas? Come in. No, Ed McGrath is, Gene. I'll have him pick up the tickets from you. Yes, right. Mrs. Blair, I'm sorry to bring you all the way downtown, but since you're the one who identified Mr. Foster... Well, I'm getting quite used to it. Uh, you know Mr. McGrath, my investigator. Oh, a private eye. How nice. Uh, Mrs. Blair... I've been going over the crime report, and your description of the suspect and the man now being held for the crime does not coincide. But that's not possible. Would you mind telling us once again, Mrs. Blair, what really happened? Well, it was the 29th of May, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. And we were having our annual charity golf tournament. I'm co-chairman, you know. And there were thousands of people. Well, it was about 11 o'clock, because the last sportsman had just teed off. And we were left quite deserted at the gate. 
Mr. Mooney, the treasurer of the club, was helping me put the money away when this man walked up. That'd be two dollars, please. You have to hurry if you're going to get your money's worth. <laughs> I'll never forget it. There was the gun pointing right at me. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Now, that being the case, how were you able to identify my client and the police show up? Mr. Matthews, you're twisting my words. No, Mrs. Blair. I just want to know why you say here that the suspect was blonde and yet you identified my client who was dark-haired. Well, he was wearing a hat. That's not in your report, Mrs. Blair. It doesn't? No, it's not. Well... He was young, and, and, and I thought he was wearing a hat. Um, is that better? Why didn't you call for help? Well, we did, but by that time he was in his car and away. Do you know the make of the car? These new models, they all look alike to me. Do you remember the color? Oh, that I remember. It was red. Did you get the number of the plates? Plates? The license number. <laughs> My dear man, without my glasses, I could barely see the car. Uh, Mrs. Blair, your estimated loss was $2,700 in small bills and silver. Were there any checks? No, it was all in cash. You've been a big help, Mrs. Blair. Thank you for coming down. I think we're making headway. What's the next step? Here's a list of names and addresses in Las Vegas. I want you to check on Foster's alibi. Las Vegas in August? It's hot, Bart. Cools off in the evening. You're on the 9.30 plane tonight. We can talk over there. I'm sorry, Mr. McGrath. You got a lot of questions from a lot of characters in a place like this. Sure, I know how that is. You work here, huh? Sort of. I'm a shell. Play on the house money when things get slow. How's we? Oh, here's his latest picture. You like Wade Foster, don't you? I like him better without a number. What's he up for? Armed robbery in L.A. Oh, no. When? Last May, May 29th. May 29th? May 29th in Los Angeles? Mm-hmm. Why, he couldn't have. He was with me here. You sure about that? That was over two months ago. Well, I remember I had the day off because of a holiday weekend coming up. Wade said if he closed a deal, we'd do the town that night. A deal? Yeah, he had a date with some rich guy to Peacock Inn to sell him some land. That was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. What time did you meet him? About 8. How about the deal? Oh, he closed it. We spent the commission that night. 50 bucks. We did the town. Well, what about the night before, May 28th? No, he was in here with another prospect. That guy lost his shirt before he could sell him enough land to stand on. Miss Lane, would you be willing to testify to what you just told me in court? Sure. All I want is my husband back. Your husband? Well, you might as well know everything. 
We were married last March in Boulder City. Hey, go on. Well, I had to keep it a secret. They don't hire married gals for my kind of work, and we need to steady money. Well, sure, I understand how that is. Look, I, I've got to go. Business is getting slow. All right. Uh, anything you want me to tell, Wade? Would you? Sure. Well, tell him if he gets home for Christmas to bring a present for the baby. Ed McGrath was hot but happy when he called the next morning to report on his interview with Margot Lane. He was almost certain she could provide us with the airtight alibi we needed for our client. The picture became even better when Ed learned at Harry's garage that my client's car had been laid up for repairs from May 27 until June 2nd, and that he never had seen Wade Foster driving a red car. His next stop was to see Horace Bascom, Foster's former employer. Well, Mr. McGrath, I'm glad you dropped in. But I don't want you to say yes or no till you take plenty of time to think it over. I will not high pressure a man. I didn't come out to buy a lot in your development, Mr. Bass. I tell you that I would have a guilty conscience if I let you pass up that golden opportunity. Why, you can double your money in a year. I don't want to double my money. You don't? Why? I'm out here, Mr. Bascom, to try and help Wade Foster. Was he working for you here in Las Vegas last May 28th and 29th? May 28th. Yes, that it was. But just to be sure, I'll look in the appointment book. Well, keep an appointment book, huh? Oh, yes. It's a necessary function in the real estate business. May 28th, huh? Eh? There, here we are. Yep. He had appointment at 10, 1 30, and 3. Yeah, he didn't make a sale. What about the next day? May 29th. Yep. Had an appointment at uh, 10. No, that is canceled. Fool lost his money in a crap game. Then, ah. Then he met Mr. March at 5 and sold lot 412 for $2,000. What was his commission? Two and a half percent. $50, huh? Yes, yeah, it was $50. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Bascom, thanks for your trouble. No, no trouble at all. May have to ask you to give a deposition. Be glad to. Always glad to help a client. Oh, uh, one more thing. Yes, sir. Do you have a company car? Company car? No. A Foster's car was laid up at the time. Now, whose car was he driving when he brought his client out here? Well, I don't know where he got it, but it certainly made a good impression. Uh, you remember what it looked like? Well, of course I do. It was a brand new Plymouth sedan. Must be hundreds of those cars around. Why do you remember that one? Because it was my favorite color, red. Yes, sir, fire engine red. Okay, thanks, Mr. Baskin. Well, now, look here. 412's gone, but that 411 lot next door is a Jim Dandy. If you don't get back in an hour, it'll be gone. Sure, there are lots of shades of red. That doesn't prove anything. Oh, well, good, Ed. You keep right at it. Where are you calling from? I can hardly hear you. I'm at Maple's Motel, where Foster used to live. Look, Bart, I'll call you back later, okay? All right, goodbye. Listen, Roy, will you turn that thing off just a minute? I can hear you all right. When you've got ten rooms to clean and nobody to help with the work, you ain't got time to stop and talk. Well, how long did Foster live here? Oh, about six, seven months. Nice boy. Always paid his rent on time. Uh, mind moving your feet, sir? Uh, did he ever stay out all night? No, sir. On that, you can be sure. How's that? Well, lots of people staying here getting divorces. Lots of them use me as a witness. They've been here six weeks. You ain't never been divorced? No, ma'am. Well, it takes that long. And you can't be away for more than 24 hours at a time. I got a front room and a bad case of insomnia. I know when you're in, and I know when you ain't. <clears throat> well, do you own a red Plymouth sedan? Don't have a car. Why would I have time to drive one? Did Mr. Foster own one? No. Nope. Owned an old Ford. Sold it the day he left here. Well, that does this room. Anything else you want to know? Uh, yes. Are you positive Mr. Foster was here the night of May 28th? Look, mister, like I told you before, it's my business to remember when they ain't here. Uh, we have to call you as a witness in this case. I get 25 a day in expenses. Mrs. Leroy, this is not a divorce trial. This well, he's been hitched to a crime, ain't he? Yep. And you're trying to separate him from it, ain't you? That's right. That's divorce in my book. 25 a day in expenses. Good day. Good day. Yeah, it's standing on the court. Sorry, sorry. Thanks a lot, uh, Mrs. Leroy. All right. Hey, that 25 has got to be in cash. Yes, sir. May I be of service? Yeah, I want to rent a car. 
Well, here's our stable. They're all brand new, in perfect condition. How about this one, the sedan? The sedan? In this weather? The convertible would be the kind of car that... I don't like it. convertible. What color is the sedan? Well, you won't like that either. It's red. Red? You recognize this man? No. No, I don't think so. Should I? How long have you worked here? Only since June the 15th. You keep a record of all the cars you rent? Certainly, that's the law. I'd like the names of everyone who rented this car last May. There you are, Lieutenant. You are a policeman, aren't you? What's the mileage from here to L.A.? Exactly 289 miles. Public defender's office, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm driving about five, five and a half hours. Huh? Well, we recommend six and a half. May 28th. Went out at 5 p.m. Returned May 31st, 9 a.m. Total mileage, 722. Signed, W. Foster. I'd like to rent this car for a few hours. Yes, sir, I'll make out the papers. Mind if I keep this long enough to have a photostat made? Well, uh, what's the matter? The fellow get in trouble of some kind? State's here that he paid for it. He paid the first installment. I beg your pardon? Unless I'm wrong, you'll be paying for it for a long time to come. And that's all the cars up until midnight, May the 28th. Now, this page is for May 29th, from 12.01 a.m. on. What was that license number again? Uh, Nevada plate 69544. Nevada, Nevada. Oh, yes, here it is. Well, that car was logged going through here at 7.44 a.m., May the 29th. Would you give me an affidavit to that effect, Inspector? I'd be glad to, Mr. McGrath. Do you have any record of the car leaving California? No, sir. Only the cars that come into the state. Oh, hi, Charlie. Hot enough for you? Not too bad. Say, do you belong to that red Plymouth parked outside? Yeah, why? Anything wrong, officer? Uh, you don't look like the same fellow. Well, I'll bet it's the same car. I should know it. I chased it for nearly 20 miles. Oh? Caught up with it just outside Barstow. He was doing nearly 90. When was this? Oh, a couple of months ago. Yeah, it was around the end of May. Gave him a ticket, but he never showed up in court. Was he headed east or west? Toward Vegas. I guess he was in a hurry to get there and lose his money. Oh, I'm afraid he was in a hurry to get there and save it. Well, I'll wait for that affidavit, Inspector. Oh, from the uh, public defender's office. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks pretty bad now. I figure he left Vegas about 5 in the morning. That would put him into the Irmo inspection station at 744. Pretty fast going. Well, it's all desert country. There's not much traffic. Anyway, you could easily get from there into Los Angeles by 11 o'clock in the morning. Go on. Well, if he left here a little after 11, that would give him almost six hours to get back to Vegas to keep his 5 o'clock appointment. You're cutting it pretty thin. How about that speeding ticket he got here? Well, we don't know it was Foster. We're not even sure it was his car. Suppose it has his name on it. Officer said he signed it. Well, he could have used a phony name. I'd like to bet he didn't. Who are you working for, Ed? Me or the district attorney? Now, wait a minute, Bart. You told me to get the facts, and I did. I don't like them any better than you do. Yeah, I know, Ed. Better to find them out now than learn them from the prosecution in court. Yeah. If he did get the ticket, I wonder what he did with it. What do you do with the ticket when you get one? Put it in my wallet. Most people do. Let's see if Foster did. the real estate business. His wife? Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. What time did you figure you'd have to get this in order to be in Las Vegas at 5 p.m.? Between 2.15 and 2.30. 2.25, May 29th. Look at the signature. W.L. Foster. I don't think the chief was too happy about letting us in after hours. I told him I had a good reason. I don't ask too many favors. Yeah. Oh, 
to say. Am I glad to see you. Oh, what's up? Something big must have happened to bring you down here this time of night. You'll know, Mr. McGrath. Well, sure, he's working on my case. How's it going? Not so good, Wade. Well, what do you mean? Didn't you go to Vegas, like you said? Just got back. Well, that's swell. Well, what'd you find out? Plenty. Yeah, I know, but what? I found out you were a good planner. Huh? And a better liar. Is this a, a rib or something? It's no joke, Wade. Well, didn't you talk to Margot? I saw her. Uh, and Mr. Bascom? He was a big help. And all those other people I told you to see, Harry and Mrs. Leroy. And... You, you forgot about the Desert Auto Rental Company. I don't know anybody there. You should. Paid him a lot of money. $82.98. This is your signature, isn't it? What's it for? A red Plymouth sedan. We have other copies. What about this speeding ticket you got outside Barstow the uh, afternoon of the robbery? Whose side are you on, anyhow? Yours. What did you do with the money? You'll never find it. What about the gun you used? Wouldn't you like to know? Want me to tell you how you did it? I don't want to hear nothing from you. Now, let's get one thing straight. Are you working for me? I'm your attorney, yes. Well, then start acting like one and help me beat this rap. You aren't going to beat it, Wade. Huh? Remember this, you're a two-time loser. If you're found guilty, you're liable to get ten years to life. Well, I'm not going to be found guilty. Then take my advice. Yeah? Change your plea to guilty and throw yourself on the mercy of the court. What? You might get off with five to ten. Tell me something, Mr. Matthews. All this information that you and your buddy here found out, who does it belong to? The public defender's office. The DA doesn't have it? I don't know what information the district attorney has. But you could give it to him. No. Now, what we know remains with us. It cannot be subpoenaed. Well, then I got news for you, Mr. Public Defender. As of one minute ago, you're fired. I don't need a lawyer. I can defend myself. And in case you didn't know it, I'm married to Margot, and she'll testify I wasn't out of her sight the 29th of May. And the state can't make her testify against me. Now, what do you say to that, Mr. Matthews? That's your privilege, Wade. The public defender can never be a party to perjury. With my record, what do I care about perjury? Hey, copper! Unlock the golden gate and let me back with the nice people. All that time and work. He had to turn out like that. You did your best, didn't you? Yeah, sure, but I feel like such a sucker. I believed him. Yeah, so did I. But what would have happened if we didn't do our best and an innocent man was found guilty? Yeah. Sure, I know. You're right. Well, at least there's one thing I can be thankful for. What's that? I won't have to represent him again. I wouldn't be too sure of that. I'm planning to retire in 15 years, remember? So? Well, he's going to be out of circulation for at least 20. Wade Foster, acting on his own behalf, went to trial four weeks later. He was found guilty of armed robbery and was sentenced to 20 years to life in the state prison. You see, the district attorney's office also has trained investigators. Now, the case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender. Public defender George Gilman, New London County, New London, Connecticut, and his staff for outstanding achievement in the cause of justice.